This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style, spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Wow. Is it time for brunch? It's always time for brunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for brunch talk. That's for sure. Always time for brunch talk when we're dishing about dating. Always. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize that people must listen to this at different times. So maybe it just sounds super awkward when you're. it's like <laughs> Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Hey, anytime you could gab with your girlfriends or guy friends. It's the best. That's the best. It could be dinner talk. It could be tea time. It could be whatever the fuck you want it to be. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to call it. But we call it brunch talk. So welcome. It's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> metaphor for dishing. Here we go. We are back again. Again, with another episode of Brunch Talk, where we dissect your burning dating questions. We we love getting these questions, and it's very therapeutic for us to answer them and to answer them together. Yes. Uh, so keep sending them in because it feels good to get them yeah. in. You can always DM us at Dateable Podcast, post in the Love in the Time of Corona, the Facebook group, but most importantly, send it over at hello at datablepodcast.com. Those are the ones that we're always looking at. So make sure to send us an email with your burning dating questions. Yeah. So this burning question for this episode is, what are your thoughts on a friends with benefits situation? Yes. And more context that we got from the submission. I'm looking to find my person and to meet someone to have a long term relationship with. I have been seeing this guy on and off, mostly as a hookup situation for the last 10 months. I don't see a future with this person. Do you see any reason why I can't continue to see them? Is it actually helping me or am I shooting myself in the foot somehow by having this relationship in my life? Yeah, uh, I get it. I get why this person is feeling this way because there's this notion of it's better to be with someone than to yeah. be alone. So might as well just have a warm body while you're trying to find your long term warm body. Personally, I think this is a very individual experience. For me, I that's never worked out because the friends with benefits situations have always turned to be a little bit messy. Yes. Uh, one person <laughs> always wants something a little bit more at the end. And and it's a miscommunication or you're misaligned. So I've had conversations where it's like, wait, you have feelings for me or now I have feelings for you. And then where do we go from here? Uh, it gets very, very messy if you are still trying to find your person because even eventually I find whoever's there can mold into your idea of your partner. I agree with the facts that it's easy to fall into. Well, you know, this isn't causing any harm. I don't really have yeah. long-term feelings for this 
this person. They're not getting in my way. I definitely did this approach for many, many years. We keep someone involved, even if they weren't what I wanted or I knew that they could give me. And I think it's almost a little bit of a crutch. Yeah. It's less motivating to go on dates when you know that you can like always get some. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> like you have less motivation. And I think too, I almost feel like you need to make space for that person. Yeah. And I would say the other thing is when I was doing this, and I think we see this with a lot of people too, what is it that you really want? Because a lot of times we say we want the long-term relationship, but our actions dictate elsewise. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself gravitating to friends with benefits all the time or loosely defined situationships or, you know, some unrequited love, something that is not a full-fledged relationship, I think you need to ask yourself, like, what is it that I really want at this stage of life? And if it is something more casual, there's nothing wrong with that. I think what gets to be problematic, though, is when we say one thing and we do actions that are the opposite. Which is what people do all the time. That's what gets us in hot water is (laughs) we say we want one thing and then we do the complete opposite. It's such a conflicting situation to be in. And with something like this, when you are with a friends with benefits, you're not friends. Like, no, get over you're that. Not you're not friends. friends. You're you fuck not buddies. Yes. Yeah, you are sleeping together. Stop saying friends with benefits. That kind of cushions the fall a little bit to say, oh, I'm sleeping with someone that I care about. It's not. This is not a friend of yours. I'm just pulling from my past experience with all of this is that I've had t- times where I've had a friends with benefit, which is not, you know, we just talked about that. It's not the case. And then if my friends ask me if I'm seeing someone, I say yes. Yes. I actually say, I'm like, yes, there's, I've been seeing someone. It's casual though. It's casual. And it's almost like you're making an excuse for why this is not the thing that you actually want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it never makes sense to say, yes, I am seeing this person because you're not. You're not friends and you're not <laughs> fucking seeing them either. Yeah, I think a lot of that because I've totally been there. I mean, some of it just depends on like, what is it that you really want out of relationships? I think a lot of times when I held on to these people that were not clearly not the right fit, there was this feeling that some thing It was better than nothing, which I think is arguably the opposite. It's actually worse than nothing because you're not fully available for something that could be what you actually want. And I wanted someone to talk to my friends about. I wanted, you know, the drama that I could have those conversations. One, not feeling left out that I was like the only one that didn't have someone. But it was almost the value of the relationship was more to bond with my friends than to have a relationship. And, you know, sometimes you just have to go through that. That stage, there's nothing wrong with it. But taking a step back of being like, where am I actually right now? And what is it? If you decide, okay, this is where I'm at, is I'm not really ready to like make someone my whole life. I'm not really ready to fully integrate someone a hundred percent. I think you just need to own that and be okay with that. Yes, yes. And not use it as a way to validate. I think that's what it is. Like to feel like you're validated in society because you have someone around. Uh I I love food. So I kind of think about this as you're trying to dine out at a Michelin star restaurant, yet you have frozen pizza at home. Yeah. So they both <laughs> will make you full. And if you always fall back to the frozen pizza, it makes you delay the need to go to a Michelin star restaurant because you're full, right? I don't yeah. need to get after that. But you would prefer <laughs> to be at the Michelin star restaurant. The cold pizza is never going to give you the same experience. It'll just gratify you in that moment because then you won't be hungry. Hungry. Uh, also, I feel like the more frozen pizzas you eat, the less desirable the Michelin star restaurant is because you're like, this is easy. I can stay yeah. at home, <laughs> just pop it in the microwave or in the oven. I don't need to get dressed up. I don't need to go out. Makes you more complacent in your journey Definitely. to love. I think it distracts you also. Oh, yeah. I know, you know, there were times and everyone has different opinions of this, but we've heard this from a few people too of taking a very intentional dating sabbatical, which yeah. means really not having all these fake relationships. And I'm going to call them fake relationships because I they think are. they are. They're not, I mean, they're a relationship. I don't want to say they're not a relationship, but it's not this long term partnership pending that's what you truly desire. And I think the more we have these going on, 
on, it gives us less time to reflect on what is it that we really want. And it also, you've kind of alluded to this too, it makes behavior normalized. Mm -hmm. I think for a while, I was like, oh yeah, it's totally normal that this guy will never text me, but he'll hit me up at 2 (laughs) a.m. after the bars. Like that's not normal. But the more we like engage in that, the more we feel, oh yeah, like that is the bare minimum I accept from Mm -hmm. someone. We don't hold people to the standards and accountability that a full-fledged integrated relationship needs to survive. It's a good point because that's when you get taken advantage of and then you start making excuses for why you're taken advantage of because we're not committed, because we're not in a relationship so they can treat me like shit. Again, going back to friends with benefits, where are the fucking benefits here? Right, sex. (laughs) It's like get a vibrator. (laughs) I'm having a hard time because the sex on someone's terms is not like you two are making plans to have sex next Saturday. It's no, it's one of you is horny and then you text the other person. Person, that's not a benefit. That's yeah. use and abuse. I think what I realized, I guess I should say, I didn't know this at the time, but I realized later on is that I needed someone that consistently showed up yeah. and felt safe with that I felt like was going to be there for me in difficult times. And I think a lot of people at the core of it, that is the need of a relationship to feel you know, like this person has your back. But if you never know the next time you're going to see someone, you never yeah. know when they're going to show up, that is basically the opposite of the core need of a relationship. It's true. I think the only benefit it's satisfying is the sex part. I guess there are no friends with benefits out there where it's just you cook together and that's it. <laughs> like That's not a situation. I feel like ben- friends with benefits, it's always a booty call yeah. with sex involved. But, but a real relationship is so much more than sex. And I personally have felt this way, c- getting out of these friends uh, with benefits situations devalued me yes. even more. I felt more insecure in myself. And I really had to take a few months to get my self-confidence back up to date the way I want to date again. Yeah. So I stumbled on Amy Chan. She's like a breakup yeah. expert breakup. Yeah. on Instagram. And she actually had a really interesting perspective. She calls it the third, the third okay. person that's lingering in a relationship. This Ooh. could be an ex that hasn't fully gone away. This could be a friends mm. with benefits. This could be an overbearing mother, she even pointed out. Mm. So it basically, who is this other person that's getting in the way of what you really want? And I think mm. a lot of times we don't see it as they're getting in their way. For years, I tricked myself into being like, I can totally date with my ex in the picture. Like, no problem. (laughs) But it's like, until I cleared that out, that's when things started to click. So I feel like people can pick up on the energy that there's someone else around. For sure. Yeah, it's... You got to clear out your space to make room for someone. And that's that's a such a great way of looking at it because it's not an infinite space that you can just have all these people in your life. So you have to get, you know, clean out the trash yeah. <laughs> in order to allow the good things to come in. So I like that perspective quite a bit. And I hope whoever wrote in this question can find some clarity to understand what is it that you're looking for? Yeah. And you're right, Julie. If if it's just looking for some hot sex, yeah, then you sex do on you. Demand, go for it, right? <laughs> just say that you're not dating anyone. This is not your friend. You're just getting some sex with someone. The only case I will put that's kind of pro friends with benefits mm-hmm. is, and again, this goes back to where you are in your dating journey. I feel like in times that I've had them, maybe I wasn't as sexually confident or I wasn't, Mm. you know, I didn't have that intimacy at all. So it it did at least teach me a little more about myself Mm. and what I wanted and gave that confidence. Again, we talked about how it can go haywire and ultimately lose that confidence. But I do want to not say that there is never a a situation for friends with benefits. So much of this is personal. Like, let's say you didn't have a lot of sexual experience. Mm, Maybe a friends with benefits is a good place to ease you in. Like, there's many things that could be there. A lot of it depends, yeah, where you are, who this person is, what the motives are, all that, what expectations are laid out up front. That's a big piece of it too. Yeah. Let's hold that thought for a few messages. 
This episode is sponsored by Vaya. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Vaya has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Vaya also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to to viahemp.com and use a code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use a code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super for good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with, share them in social, Super excited to see what you end up choosing. Living with ADHD can be a challenge, and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge, we've heard many of you say. But finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Online visits, refills, and a 24-7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Done's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry-fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. I think you should think about it from the other perspective of someone that would date you too. Let's say you do want a monogamous committed relationship. If you met someone that had a friends with benefits on the side while you were dating them, would that be feel like a viable prospect to you? Probably not. Like, I'm even just saying it out loud. I mean, like, I wouldn't want to be with someone that had this going on. Just because we do it, would we feel the same way if the situation was reversed? That just made me feel a little grossed out thinking about it that way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't like that at all. And I I think it's unfortunate that so many people are so afraid of being alone. Yeah. And that darkness, being alone, is um, more scary than being with the wrong person. Yeah. And I hope we have more discernment to know what is good for us and what is not good for us. And in every friends with benefits situation that I can recall, it never ended well for me. I can identify no. that pattern. And I love the saying, you don't have problems, you have patterns. So if you can identify these yeah. patterns, then you can know how to shift your outcome. And end of the 
the day, it's about what it is good for you and what it is that you truly want, not what it is satisfying in this moment right now. Yeah. I had a friends with benefits that went on way too long, like close to two years. And, yeah. you know, I definitely developed feelings and it was something yeah. that I didn't have at the beginning, but I feel like just the, you know, the dopamine hits and like the sex hormones that go off, yeah. like even if you are like, objectively, I have no attraction to this person, <laughs> you will be attracted by you two will. years of mm-hmm. sleeping with them. And I remember asking him to meet up to talk about like what we were doing. And he said, no, he basically was like, no, I won't meet up with you for a drink or a coffee. Wow. And I'm like, this is someone I'm allowing to sleep with me, but he won't meet me to like, yes. talk. like it's so messed up. And I think you just accept the bare minimum so yes. often. And you know, I'm not like, you got to learn from this stuff. And I think that definitely helped me realize what I'll never stand for again in my life and, you know, value. Mm-hmm. If someone said to me, no, I will not like have a conversation with you. I'd be like, okay, fuck off. Like basically Bye, yeah. this is done. And it does take developing that. And sometimes you have to go through these experiences. So I think if you are finding yourself in this situation, you're relating to this episode that, hey, I'm actually saying one thing and doing the other. It's time to take inventory. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. time to, you know, you can end this whenever you want. And how can you take what you've done, what this action has been with this friends with benefits or unreciprocal situation and use it to where you're trying to get? What can you learn for this? What standards can you have moving forward? What discernment can you have? How can you be more intentional of finding people that align with what you're actually looking for? Amen. Okay, so what advice do we have for someone that's in here? That's trying to get out. Let's say they're digmatized or pussy whipped. We learned that <laughs> it's hard because we understand it's hard to let go of something when you have nothing. And it is unfortunate that society views something, even something terrible, as better than nothing. How can people kind of unravel and get to where they need to be? I find cutting people off cold turkey is the best way because otherwise there are no nothing lingering. There are no feelings that are going to be lingering lingering past, you know, cutting each other off. So I feel like that's the most humane way of getting yourself out of the situation. I know that probably sounds scary, but maybe it's about filling up your social calendar, reconnecting with your friends. I think replacing a toxic relationship with healthy relationships will help you rise out of the situation. So maybe it's like the friends that you haven't seen in a while or the coworkers that you really enjoyed being around. Replace your time with this toxic person with the people who truly would care about you. Yeah, I think take yourself on a retreat. And Mm. you know, this could be somewhere that you travel to, or it could be somewhere that you walk to. It does not need to be seen by any means. There's probably some kind of nook or area in wherever you live that could be soothing. I feel like somewhere with water always does it for me in some way. (laughs) And really getting clear and intentional of what is it that I want? And what have my patterns been up until now? Mm. And, you know, I think giving yourself this reward and treat of putting yourself first can help minimize any feelings of, you know, not having this person in your life, because you can at least know that I'm doing something that's helping me in the long run. And it's so hard because we can't see the future and we're very present biased. We just see what's in front of us today, but it's very short sighted when you think about it. I remember doing this, like there was exercises that you'd visualize yourself like with your partner and what a Saturday looked for you, what a birthday looked for you. And I think even having the hope that that's possible And another one was what about my friends? Like, do I love about their partnership? So you're kind of pulling that these examples actually exist. And that can help you kind of start to be more intentional and look for figure out what you're looking for ultimately, and then realize when situations are getting in the way of that vision and not being additive to that vision. So instead of subtracting something from your life, like a person, you're now adding by (laughs) removing them to what it is you ultimately want. Yeah. A visualization exercise I've done in the past is visualize your room and put the person in your room, the said toxic friends with benefits in your room. What do you see? Where are they standing? Are they standing in front of a door or a window? Are they blocking the light? Are they blocking your furniture? Are they blocking your view? And when I did this exercise, I was like, they're standing in front of my fucking door. 
I can't leave. I'm trapped in here and it's dark. So when I was able to visually push them away from the door, the light came in and it a breeze came in to mm-hmm. my room that meant there was something much better out there. And this person's blocking that space. Visualize what feelings, what colors, what what temperature this person brings into your mind when you think about them. It's always a great gut check of who this person is in your life and what they represent for you. I love that. I was listening to this podcast about actually how to you know have more in life is to remove. And it kind of makes me think about that. It it follows, you know, Marie Kondo, right? It's like all about eliminating and, you know, (laughs) feng shuiing your dating life and getting rid of what's not serving you. So I love what you were just saying. That example is this person's blocking the door. If that person was not there, the door is now wide open. So it's like, how do we reframe that to be like, I'm actually getting more by removing this? Yeah, love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, I mean, this was a tough one because I think it's so easy to justify how this is helping. I've definitely yeah. felt this before, like, oh, maybe I'm not as, I won't have sex as early on dates because I'm like getting it elsewhere. Oh, right, right. Or yeah. I won't be as like thirsty or as I won't be as needy. Yeah. But then when you really think about it, like, don't you want all that stuff in a relationship? I feel like it's yes. just a justification that you there's something deeper down of that you're not ready or you don't believe you could have it, whatever that is. So how do you get to the root of what that really is to figure out if this is the right path opposed to these kind of like surface level benefits that you're seeing. So true. So true. And just be honest with yourself. (laughs) End of the day. Yep. Be honest. Yeah. Awesome. Well, friends with benefits, always a fun topic. All been there. Yes. Don't let it go on two years. That's all I can say. (laughs) I wish I could get those years back. (laughs) But then at the same time, it got me to where I am today. So you could look at it that way. You could always spin it that way. I think the most important thing is that you're staying true to where you are at different stages of your life. And you're not just repeating the same thing over and over again without learning from it. Yes. Yes. Evaluated experiences is what makes us wiser. Just aging does not make us wiser. We're just (laughs) collecting experiences. We've got to reflect on them. So thank you for this question. It's nice to reflect on those periods in my life. And I'm so glad I learned from those. I can't wait for these more questions to come in so we can all reflect on them together. Yes. Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. 